That's right, it's turning into apparently a dire situation out in Plaquemines Parish where the levee was overtopping near Myrtle Grove. We're now hearing that levee overtopping could possibly be a levee breach. Let's get straight to our Paul Murphy with the latest on the situation. Yeah, it is really becoming a critical situation here at the Point Celeste pumping station in Plaquemines Parish, where I guess about 10 miles south of Myrtle Grove. And as you can see, and we push in with our camera, you can see the water just cascading off the top of the levee here. Uh, in the background is, a, is cement that protects the pump station here, but you can see the water just cascading off of the levee and we're told that this is about a half mile stretch of back levee that's now uh, su uh, it's now sustained uh, uh, some of the overtopping um, and, and this is what local officials are worried could lead to a levee breach at this hour. Let's bring in Sheriff Jerry Turlich. What is your observation of what we're looking at right now? Well, like you said, this is critical. This is a uh, Point Celeste pumping station. As you can see, we have several hundreds of yards of water overtopping our back levee canal. And it's a concern because this is this is the exact situation we did not want to have happen. That this is this usually affects Highway 23 travel. So up until this point, we've been talking about overtopping, but this could quickly develop into something much worse. Yeah, right now it's overtopping, but with the amount of water that's going over the, the levee, you know, we just we just have our fingers crossed that it doesn't breach. And if we could, Derek, take a look at the flow of the water that is coming from the overtopping. You can see a good current, and this is all water that is heading to, uh, I guess, about a quarter of a mile to a half a mile to Highway 23. And this is what could eventually cover Highway 23. That's correct. And, and these winds that are pushing us around while we're talking, that uh, is aiding this water in its efforts. So what is your biggest concern right now? You told me that you may have to uh, think uh, pretty quickly uh, about closing the road in advance of, of this uh, a possible washout. We're going to keep an eye on this water, and it, it, if it becomes too unsafe to travel or, or the, the Highway 23 becomes too unsafe, we're going we're gonna to have to close it down on the, on, on the south end and on the north end, and it, we will be uh, cut in half. The parish will be cut in half. Again, are we sorry. It is pretty windy down here, so if the camera is bouncing around, we're getting pelted by uh, about 15-mile-per-hour uh, gusts here. Stronger than that. I, I would say these are consistent 30, 35s with a, with a gust of 50, 55. So if we could get Derek to zoom right uh, into the overtopping while we're here one more time. And, and again, uh, set the stage for us, Sheriff. Well, over here, this is our back levee canal. Uh, and, and you can see for hundreds of yards, it looks like whitewater rapids are going over the top of it. Um, this is the pumping station right here. That, that uh, also is uh, experiencing some problems right now with uh, overtopping of water. And you say this goes on for about a half a mile? Yeah, you can see, as far as you can see, you can see white caps going over the back levee. And what would this levee uh, be? This, this area that we're looking right here would all be dry, right? Yeah, uh, this whole area is normally dry. Um, you have one canal that goes right in front of this area, this structure right here. It's a small canal, it's a drainage canal. All of this is usually dry. And on the other side is Bear Terrier Bay? No, that, well, it's close. It, it actually leads into uh, uh, Lake Hermitage and that area back over here. And let's bring in the uh, council chair from Plaquemines Parish, Bo Black. What is your main concern right now, Bo? Yeah, as the sheriff just said, this is this is some of the first times we've seen this type of open topic. Um, you know, in, in my district and in the northern end, northern end in Bell Chase, uh, we don't really have a lot of concerns. So we're all the council members are out and about in other districts helping support each other. Uh, the council member for this district is Carlton LaFrance. He's down at Jefferson Lake right now, which actually had a breach and pushed some Hesco baskets out of the way. Um, I mean, the major concern right now is to get people evacuated up north, get them out of the lower end, of the southern end, because um, like the sheriff said, at any point, this water can reach the roadway. So uh, like I said, all of our council members out and about in different districts, just supporting each other, helping the sheriff's office. Uh, we want to get all of the emergency personnel focused on, on dealing with roadway conditions and issues like that uh, and not have to worry about rescue operations. So uh, heed everybody's warnings. If, you, if you're still south of the floodgate, um, or, or really south of this area, you're not going to be able to evacuate in the next few hours here because I think this, like the sheriff said, I think this is going to reach the roadway pretty soon. 
So now it's the time to get out, or you may get stuck here for a couple days. That's absolutely correct. I think you know once this comes in, who knows how long it's going to take to subside uh, or to get off the roadway. So uh, we're just keeping a close eye on it right now, and uh, like we like we're all saying, it's time to evacuate, and we don't have much time left. And what's your understanding of when this overtopping began? From what I understand about this, this overtopping started you know a couple hours ago. I think high tide was around one o'clock, one o'clock today. So it's at its highest tide. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's coming over this levee like, pretty fast. And in Myrtle Grove, I mean, there, there's no more room. Uh, it, it's coming over the levees at Myrtle Grove. The levees are a lot lower than this. Um, but the water's rising. I mean, a couple, about an hour or two hours ago, uh, you can walk. This was all grass. Uh, as you can see, within an hour, now we have about two foot of water. So help me with my geography here. We are about 10 miles south of Myrtle Grove, thereabouts? Yeah, we're about, about six or seven miles south of Myrtle Grove. Um, about maybe 12 miles south of, uh, of the floodgate in Oakville. So we're, we're pretty close to the floodgate um, and, and about maybe 20 miles to Bell Chase. Yeah, so de definitely a, a lot of concern at this hour in Plagovitz Parish. Yeah, we are concerned. Uh, this is, like I said, the first time we've seen uh, some of this at levee overtopping, uh, and it just reinforces the need for, um, for, the, for some improvements. I mean, as you can see, the Corps is actually is out here working right now to help uh, with, with the overtopping issue. Uh, so everybody's working hard as they can. All right, appreciate it. Thank you, Council Chair Bo Black from Plaquemines Parish. Again, a very critical situation in Plaquemines Parish. We're about, as the councilman said, about seven miles south of Myrtle Grove here. And uh, as you saw these dramatic pictures, water just cascading over the levees. Right now we're talking about an overtopping situation, but the sheriff and others are concerned that the overtopping could eventually lead to a levee breach and push all of this water that you see coming down here up into Highway 23 and therefore cutting off the southern end of the parish to the northern end of the parish. So again, as you heard Councilman Black give you the warning, if you live south of here, now's the time to get out because it's gonna, the water will sit on Highway 23 for a couple days now. Uh, and, and as I should say that the uh, parish is now trying to attack this problem right at the source. Uh, they, they're trying to move some sandbags back here. They've been given some help from the governor. Uh, the National Guard is on its way to help. Uh, they're gonna try to bring in some big sandbags to help with this situation right now. But at this point, uh, I can say that the, the, uh, the really is a, a critical situation here and people need, need to take heed. And that's the situation here in Point Celeste in Plaquemines Parish, Paul Murphy, Eyewitness Paul, News. Paul, before you leave, Paul, before you leave, we just, we were, we were curious, is, are there two levees that have been overtopped, one where you are in Point Celeste and another one in Myrtle Grove? It is a system of back levees that extend all the way down through here, and, and it, it protects this area. Most of this is pasture land. There are some homes here as well uh, from Lake Heritage uh, and then on to the Barataria Bay. Uh, so this, we're not talking about the Mississippi River levee here. We're talking on the other side of Highway 23, and it is a system of back levees. They, that's what they refer to it as. It's not a federal levee. It is uh, a state levee. It is a, a local parish levee system um, that, and frankly, has been in sore need of improvement for years. And uh, they do have authorization to get this, uh, these levees lifted. Uh, to the federal standard. We're just not quite sure when uh, that will happen. If, if you bear with me, I can uh, get the uh, state representative from this area, Chris Leopold, to maybe explain a little bit more. And as I walk over to get Chris, take another shot of, of what we're talking about uh, here, where we're seeing a lot of overtopping right now. And uh, we're gonna go over and talk with Chris Leopold, who's walking towards me right here that I want to ask about uh, the question that, that you just had here. Hey. Chris, I just lost my hat. I see you did too. <laughs> uh, we, what we want to know is uh, how soon can we get these uh, levees under the federal system uh, and, and, and maybe explain what these back levees are now and what you hope they will be. Again, this is State Representative Chris Leopold who represents part of the, all of Plaquemines Parish in the state legislature. Well, Paul, we need to direct the attention to the parties responsible. And again, this is a core responsible project. And uh, we were hoping this would be done already and that we wouldn't be in this position again. But the key to it is to protect Highway 23. 
which is the artery to Venice with so much commerce and industry that we have already and the more that, and, and the more that we're expecting to come. So what has to be done, though, to start this project? This project has been started. As you, this, this part of this project here was a pump station that's, a, that's during, in, during construction. But this segment of the levee system here uh, obviously had not been started yet. And uh, as a result of the press conference this morning that we had, I had a meeting. They, they gathered it in the back of the room, and they apparently at this time seemed motivated to move the project forward. And we're going to find out exactly what pieces are missing uh, to get this project to move forward. And maybe explain what this levee is. It's, it's just a system of back levees that, that starts uh, somewhere south of, of the floodgate? This is, a, this is a private levee that has never been in a federal system, so it's never been part of a government levee system. It's always been the weak, the weak link in the chain, if you will. And as a result of Katrina, the federal government appropriated the money to federalize the entire levee system, uh, including the, the previous private section. Uh, moving forward. Of course, Katrina was in 2005, and this is 2019. All right, thank you very much. And, you. and again, as we've been talking, uh, it is uh, pretty windy, and unfortunately, that wind is coming from a direction that is pushing the water over these levees here. You can see my, my hat blew off. It is, uh, it's by someone's estimation, anyway. Uh, we're looking at about 30 uh, mile per hour winds here. And it, again, it's pushing the water over the levees, and it's cascading over the levees at this hour. Uh, again, uh, we could look at be looking at a possible levee breach in the not too distant future, and that would certainly uh, be a, a big problem for Highway 23. Now back to you. All right, thank you very much, Paul. It certainly illustrates the need to get that uh, levee raised now. Sure, it is such a huge issue, and as you're saying, such a dire situation for people in that area. So if you are south of that, it, you won't be able to move right. around once Highway 23 is covered with water.